We want to get every last shred of evidence. While a small army continues to search for debris. We're leaving no stone unturned, following every single lead that we possibly can find. NASA widens its investigation. We are extremely interested in any debris upstream of the primary impact area. If we truly were shedding some material as early as California, that's going to be significant to us. But were any signals missed? I think that it's quite obvious that NASA has had to compromise safety because they simply haven't had enough money. The shuttle is just basically a bad vehicle. And has the time come to change the space program as we know it? The fact is, it's going to, to open up that discussion, and we will have a discussion of whether this is really the way we want to spend our resources. Tonight, the loss of the Columbia. Are the risks too great? From ABC News. This is Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Chris Bury. Like so many longtime love affairs, America's infatuation with space travel had been losing some of its old spark. No longer did the networks broadcast every liftoff and landing. No longer did school children learn every astronaut's name. In fact, the shuttle's comings and goings had become ordinary. So routine it has taken another tragic accident to make many of us sit up and take notice. But naturally, in the wake of Saturday's Columbia disaster, the questions are coming hard and fast. Some are urgent. Did something happen on liftoff to damage those tiles, protecting the shuttle from the heat of re-entry? Some questions fall into the category of second guessing, where warnings missed and critics ignored. Then there are larger questions. Are the shuttles in particular, and manned spaceflight in general, really worth the risk to human life? Can the old American infatuation survive another shuttle catastrophe? Our broadcast tonight is an attempt to examine some of those questions, and we begin with the latest on the investigation from Nightline's Deborah Amos. The clues collected from forests and fields, from ponds and schoolyards, don't yet add up to much. How did the Columbia come to such a terrible end? NASA is no closer to an answer today. That missing link is out there, and it, here we are, 48 hours from the event. Um, so we're still struggling with it. Lisa Stark has been covering the NASA briefings. NASA says they may never be able to figure out what caused the heat buildup on the left side of the shuttle during re-entry. One focus of the investigation remains that piece of insulation that came off the tank hit the wing during liftoff. We've now learned that piece was 16 by 20 inches, weighed more than two and a half pounds. NASA says it will assume that was the cause of the accident and try to determine if what happened to Columbia fits that assumption. An assumption that will focus on these, the shuttle's thermal tiles, tiles that protect a spacecraft from the searing heat of re-entry in the Earth's atmosphere. In a 1990 report, scientist Elizabeth Pate Cornell show that when crucial tiles are damaged, the risk increases significantly. NASA wants another look at her data. Yesterday, um, one of the, um, someone from the, from the headquarters uh, asked me to send back to him a copy of my report because they remembered very well that it existed and what I had said. What they, they could not remember is where they had put it. There were promises today for the most open accident investigation ever. A former Navy Admiral, Harold Gaiman, has been named to oversee a review. Additional investigating teams are expected to be named soon. NASA officials are getting high marks for sharing rather than hiding frustrations in these early days. Two, one, and liftoff. It was very different 13 years ago. After the first shuttle disaster, the Challenger, and the investigation that followed. There was a feeling that NASA had put the wagons in a circle. Uh, to use a bad analogy. Go and throttle up. Eugene Covert, a professor of aeronautics at MIT, was on the commission that investigated the Challenger disaster. He says the investigators must also come from outside the government. They are, in a sense, grading their own uh, examination paper, and there are going to be people who uh, have difficulty accepting that they can be 
absolutely open, honest, and forthright in, under those circumstances. 30 seconds into the flight. Questions about the cause of the crash of an aging spacecraft raise broader questions about overall safety. Last August, Don Nelson, a 36-year NASA veteran, sent this letter to the president pleading for a halt to the shuttle program. He feared a major crash. There's no way that you can make this vehicle 100% safe, and it's just a matter of time until you have another tragedy like uh, the Challenger. In July 2002, NASA's Inspector General's report showed the shuttle's safety program required additional funding. The government's accounting office raised safety concerns. They warned that the NASA shuttle's workforce had declined significantly to the point of reducing NASA's ability to safely support the shuttle program. We have booster ignition and... The concerns are not new, but the media and the public are not focused on the shuttle program. Flights are so routine that in the early hours of Saturday morning, few Americans were aware that Columbia was about to land. I think the shuttle's always been dangerous. Space flight, no matter how you did it, would be dangerous. Uh, I think there have been so many generalized warnings about the shuttle. They're like generalized terrorism threats. As long as it's working, people don't pay attention. What matters now is that it's failed a second time, and it's shown us, I think, that it's fundamentally fra flawed through that second failure. Space flight is dangerous. Just how dangerous was made abundantly clear in the early hours of Saturday morning. The seven astronauts on board accepted the risks, but after this disaster, are politicians and the public willing to continue? It is a question that Ken Bowersox and Don Pettit may be asking. Along with a Russian astronaut, they are orbiting in the International Space Station. A Russian cargo ship was launched yesterday to bring them supplies. NASA officials say they are safe. We have sufficient life support capability to support the International Space Station without the help of the space shuttle for several months. In fact, up until the uh, May or June time period. But these men may be the last Americans in space for some time to come. The three remaining NASA shuttles have been grounded until the cause is found and fixed. After the Challenger disaster, it was nearly three years before NASA launched a manned space flight. This is Deborah Amos for Nightline in Washington. The Columbia catastrophe, like the Challenger disaster before it, raises the inevitable question, is manned space travel really worth the risks? That part of the story when we come back.